All right, everybody, welcome into the penultimate episode of this season's Matt Report, uh, brought to you by Cobus Insurance Center. I'm Sean Bennett from the Chronicle Telegram, being joined this week by former Illyria wrestler and Illyria and Illyria Catholic coach, John McNulty. I know you're impressed you. by my use of the word penultimate. I can, <laughs> I can see that on your face. So, um, But yeah, uh, thanks for coming on. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Awesome. All right. Well, let's start with we, as we do each show with the top three performances from last week. As you know, it was the district tournament, uh, which is high level. Everybody's uh, battling to get to the state tournament. And uh, we had uh, three uh, uh, state qualifiers we want to kind of highlight. We're going to start with Lyria's Mick Burnett. Uh, the senior won 138 pound Division I district championship at Perrysburg. Uh, won a 13 4 major decision over St. Edward's Evan Bennett, who is ranked number five in the state. Uh, during the semifinals, then won a 17-2 technical fall over Anthony Wayne's Zach Snyder, who was ranked number eight in the state in the final. Um, obviously impressive to get uh, bonus points against uh, two guys ranked in the top ten, but Mick Burnett's nationally ranked. He's uh, you know projected to win his second straight state championship, so I guess that's not really a surprise. Right. Uh, it's in the blood there. <laughs> <laughs> Real quick, state rankings, things like that. When you were wrestling, uh, I know it was back in the uh, 70s, Larry High, was the Breakman Report already being run, and how big of a deal were uh, rankings at the time? Yeah, the, the Breakman Report was run. Uh, it, it was out then. Um, I, I, when I was a senior, I was predicted to win it. Mm -hmm. But I was when I was a junior, too. But uh, <laughs> some other things happened. Well. But, you know, <laughs> that, that goes with it. But, I mean, in that age, without Internet and stuff like that, the Breakman Report is probably pretty important because you may not have any kind of scouting materials and that at least gives you a, a rough landscape of who the toughest guys are and who maybe uh, you kind of are looking for down there. Right. R uh, roughly it does. It, uh, uh, these guys, uh, though I'm sure like Mick and Dylan, and, uh, it's, it's just writing to them. Their goals already, uh, they, they have their goal, they know what they're, they're going to do and they're going to achieve that and people can say what they want about them, they're still going to go get it done. Right on. Well, you mentioned Dylan. Dylan Shaver of Valeria is our next uh, top performance. Uh, he also a senior at, uh, for the Pioneers. He won the 126-pound uh, Division I District Championship, also at the Perrysburg uh, Tournament. Uh, won a 14-6 major decision over Berea Midpark Shane Howe, who's ranked number eight in the state. Then won, uh, that was in the semifinals. Then he won an 11-3 major decision over St. Edward's Caden Kralik, who's ranked number 16 in the final. Again, bonus points over two state-ranked guys. Uh, these two guys uh, have been getting it done for four years for Illyria, and they just go in and they kind of, they're like wrecking balls to that district bracket. They're keeping the tradition going. Yeah. And, and it's what you said, the, the bonus points. You need a little bit of luck this weekend, everything going your way, and keep striving to get those bonus points. But first, I got to add in there, the most important thing is you, got, you have to take care of yourself first. Right, right. Uh, and, and, you know, bonus points will come. That seems to be a theme uh, down the stretch here. I've been talking to guys about getting bonus because they're in this race with St. Edward, this team race, and I'm like, bonus, bonus, is how important? And they kind of stress that Eric Burnett says to them, you got to win first, you got to secure the win, then you worry about the bonus. So as long as you get in the win, then you can put the bonus up. And it's exactly, exactly what you're saying. Yep. That's obviously a good coaching point then. Uh, we're going to wrap it up with uh, Peyton Bergdorf of Firelands, another senior, all seniors down the board here. Uh, he won the 132-pound Division II uh, District Championship at the Norwalk Tournament. He won an 11-0 major decision over Defiance's Tristan Villarreal, who's ranked number 16 in the state in the semifinals, then won 10-3 over Mansfield's Josh Lyons, who's ranked number 6 in the state in the final. Again, two dominating performances against two state-ranked guys, and that seems to be the theme for our top three performances. Everybody just kind of getting the job done. Yep, exactly. A couple honorable mentions on top performances before we go. Larry is Ben Dor and Vermillion's Brandon DeEgidio. DeGidio, I keep mispronouncing that name. He'll, he'll pronounce it correctly in the uh, favorite movie, which we're about to see shortly. Uh, both uh, beat uh, uh, higher-ranked wrestlers, guys that are ranked higher than them in the state, uh, en route to qualifying to the state tournament this weekend, so I wanted to give them props. Dora won 3-2 over number 6 Ty Cobb of Oregon Clay, and DeGidio won uh, uh, pinned number 14 Noah Alda of Bellevue, so uh, really dominating uh, performances there. Also, to Midview's Daniel Bucknavich went 4-0 with four first-period pins. Kid's 39 and 0 with like 36 pins this year. Uh, he pinned uh, number nine Ethan Green of Fremont Ross in the final. Um, just a fantastic uh, season for that heavyweight. You can't get much better than that. <laughs> All right, so our top three uh, performances again: Mick Burnett of Valeria, Dylan Shaver of Valeria, and Peyton Bergdorf of Firelands. 
All right, we're moving on to my favorite move. It's brought to you by Century 21 Deanna Realty. Um, this week, we're going out to see Vermillion's Brandon Digidio. I've been mispronouncing that kid's name for three years, and he kind of let me finally know this year uh, the pronunciation. <laughs> he's going to say it right here. So um, he's going to show what he calls the claw lift. Um, you call it kind of a crotch lift type setup. Yeah, yeah it's, it's splitting the guy when you're it's splitting the guy between the legs and then going to the head, taking him to the back, right, right to the back for some near fall points or, or yeah. yeah, hopefully the pin stuff. Like that, pen. so uh, this is again my favorite move. Vermillion's brand Digidio, uh, bringing you the claw lift, sponsored by Century Twenty One Deanna Realty. I'm Brandon Digidio. I'm a senior at Vermillion High School, and my favorite move is a claw lift from a thigh pry and a claw. So. Basically what you do is you hit it kind of like a spiral, you come across the claw in a thigh pry, then you run it out to the side, then you take the weight off, let them rise, and then your hand that was on the thigh pry comes through the legs, you keep the claw, step up, dip the claw and flip them to their back. You can turk off of it too if you want to. So, I mean, that's uh, I mean, uh, what do you think from a coaching perspective? You look pretty uh, solid. Oh, uh, it's a great move. I mean, normally you you, you want to pick a guy up, return him to the mat, and it's just an, another way to take a guy down with also going to the back to get back points or the fall. Um, it. it you're actually using the guy's momentum because you're pushing into him. When you drop to the leg, it's pretty easy to lift then, and then yeah. you go to the head. It's well, a golden I'm, rule in wrestling that we, we see that any time a guy's off the mat, you go to the head. Right. Uh, so, obviously, uh, Brandon will be representing the Sailors down in Columbus this weekend. So, obviously, uh, good luck to him, and we appreciate him uh, being part of uh, My Favorite Move uh, this week. So, My Favorite Move, brought to you by Central 21 Indiana Realty. Uh, Good luck this weekend. All right, we're on to the next segment, and we're going to be talking state tournament. And that's, uh, you know, obviously prevalent right now because we're just days away from uh, the state tournament down in Columbus. Uh, we have uh, 20 uh, coverage area wrestlers down at the state tournament. It's going to be exciting. They're going to be all battling for uh, podium spots, and many of them are going to be battling for that state championship. Uh, thought I'd talk to you kind of first about your memories of the state tournament as a competitor. You were down there a few times with Deliria High. Uh, as you mentioned, you mentioned you won the state tournament in um, uh, 1978. Uh, I think you went undefeated that year, right? 30-0. Right. Um, your senior year. Um, just your thoughts of going down. Now, it wasn't at the uh, Value City Arena at Ohio State then. It was uh, yeah, St. John's. St. John's Arena. Yep. St. John's. Um, your thoughts of just uh, kind of going down there and competing in, in it's, that uh, it's, environment? It's fantastic. It, on a, from a wrestling point of view uh, to a coach's point of view, it's one of the best times of your life. Best time of the year, really. Mm -hmm. um, people talk about Ma March Madness, but this is our March Madness coming up with the high school state championship to kind of warm up, and then you got the NCAA championships coming up. But going down to Columbus and rep wrestling and representing your school uh, it's something you carry with you the rest of your life it's it's a great time and obviously you won a, a state championship for Lyria and they've got um, a lot of uh, you know history with state champions with a lot of guys placing um, how cool is it to kind of just get your name your name still up on that wall you know and stuff like that you picture up there uh, in the in the hall I don't know if you get to see all the, the how decorated it is now they've got the uh, the state runner-up teams the state championship team from 1973 these big posters up there big trophy case. Uh, it's really cool to be part of that. Uh, it, it is. And, it, 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 and with Elyria too, uh, it's part of that, see that tradition keep going. And I was a part of that as a little boy with Coach Pearson. And it, just, it I'm out of the picture now, but watching it, it's, it's kind of neat because I know it coaching wise and what the kids are going through too. And it, it's just a great time. It's a fun time, especially when you come out with your hand raised. And then obviously you got to be part of that as a competitor, but as a coach, um, you get, took several guys down. Obviously, one of the most decorated was a uh, three-time state champion, Scott Burnett, uh, Eric's brother, uh, Adeliria Catholic. Um, just uh, got to be kind of a just as awesome experience going down there as a coach and, and coaching those guys up to the top of the podium. Yeah, uh, 
it's it's fantastic. It's a it's a different kind of thing from when you're a wrestler and then when, uh, opposed to when you're a coach. It's they're both great emotions and great things to have. It's just it's it's kind of different. It, you're watching a young man succeed, and, and that's pretty neat. Right, reach their dreams, their ultimate dreams, stuff like that. Um, I mean, I, I, I've, uh, since I've been covering wrestling, you've been taking guys down. And then when you retired from coaching, you went down a couple times with me, got to be do the, the Coach's Corner uh, segment we did. Um, yep. um, just all kinds of different experiences down there. It's uh, got to be something that you probably probably still think about today, some of the different oh, yeah. memories over the course of the years. And even what you just mentioned going down with you, that was a whole new learning process. You just think a guy, right? There's a lot. <laughs> uh, it, I actually, go, do, I actually do some work down there. Yeah, there, <laughs> there's a heck of a lot of work. I, I couldn't do it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it, it's when you go to Columbus and you, you walk into that arena, it, it's just that, it, there's nothing better than it. I don't care if you're working it, if you're coaching it, if you're yeah. wrestling. Even in a spectate, spec, excuse me, spectator point of view, it's just a neat place to be. Yeah. All right, well, let's uh, kind of move on to our final segment, and this is just usually an informal talk uh, between uh, myself and the guest co-host, which happens to be you this week, and just want to kind of, uh, let's start with your beginning, of your origin uh, story with the sport of wrestling. Um, How did you get into it? How young were you, and what were your earliest thoughts of uh, wrestling? Well, I was about seven, eight years old, and they didn't have really wrestling around here at all. I went to Elyria High, and it was in a basement down then of... Uh, where the drama club used to practice that and it was a padded room and looked like something pretty scary and i wound up wrestling for uh bill pearson and danny turnus was his assistant at mm -hmm. the time that those two and a man named frank fiore got me sent over to west shore and i started wrestling at west shore ymca for howard ferguson that led to me going uh leaving illyria Elyria didn't have a high school ninth grade then. St. Ed's did, and mm -hmm. I wanted the opportunity to wrestle in high school as a ninth grader. So I followed Howard Ferguson to St. Ed's, went to St. Ed's for three years, and then I wound up leaving St. Edward, going to Elyria High my junior year, and then senior year, obviously. And then you, uh, I did a lot of international wrestling and went to the University of Arizona and Louisiana State. All right. Well, you're jumping ahead all up in my notes. So um, let's talk about, first of all, international wrestling. I think you might still be the only Lorraine County wrestler ever to win a gold medal in international competition. That was at the Pan Am Games down in South America, correct? Yeah, and the, the World Games uh, that I won the gold in, um, that was in Santa Domingo, in mm -hmm. the Dominican Republic, before it okay. became what it is. But, right. uh, yeah, that, that was pretty neat. Uh, and you won, I think, bronze medal in another uh, Pan Am, like a junior Pan Am, and you yeah. won uh, gold in, like, a, uh, like a, almost like a cadet freestyle type. Uh, yeah, well, I won, I won the the nationals five times in freestyle and four times in Greco. Um, <laughs> a lot of people think I was Greco, but freestyle was really my my best wrestling. Right. Um, I I. Mm, I, I liked international wrestling, and I was fortunate I got to represent the United States nine times uh, doing it. Either m Mainly, they were freestyle. How about the college experience? Obviously, like you said, University of Arizona, you went there uh, a couple years, and then I think they had to, they shut down the wrestling program. You uh, transferred to Louisiana State. Uh, you know, everybody is really enthralled right now. NCAA has been gaining steam over the last few years. It's become such a big deal. College wrestling has to be kind of a, just a, like a different type of deal. It's a different world when you get to college. Uh, it's almost like starting back over again. Anything that you accomplished before that means absolutely nothing. You find out you're the young guy again at the bottom of the uh, of the list because there's older guys then, and everything is tougher. You don't have mommy and daddy there anymore. Uh, you don't have your favorite coach there anymore. You travel. You've got to get your studies done. It, it's just a big, big uh, adjustment, and uh, it, it's something special. I'm glad right. I got to experience it. Uh, the battles on the mat, nothing compared to the battles you had after your career was unfortunately ended during that you had a motorcycle accident. I think we've done a story on that in the past. Correct. Uh, so you've had some tough uh, battles with uh, some you know medical issues since then, um, but 
that didn't stop you from uh, staying with wrestling. You uh, obviously uh, coach you. I think you started as an assistant for Dan Turnus at Southview, then went on to coach at your alma mater, then um, coached uh, for better part of two decades at Elyria Catholic. Uh, how nice was it to be able to kind of stay with that sport that you love so much? Uh, fantastic. I, I must tell you, I started uh, with Frank Jane as okay. an assistant. Then I went to Dan Turnus. Okay. And, uh, just to declare that, because I was in a motorcycle wreck and I got offered it then. And that kind of uh, wrestling, I wouldn't be walking today. I probably wouldn't be here if it wasn't for wrestling. Um, it, it probably doesn't make sense to a lot of people, but it got me over the... It, it, there's a lot of things I had to fight. And when you accomplish some things in wrestling and some of the things you have to sacrifice... Um, it kind of relates, you know, that way to it. It, it got me through it. Yeah. And, I, you know, we've talked, obviously, uh, multiple times, and you've had some great stories over the years in regard to wrestling, um, certainly from the coaching perspective, I'm sure from the competitor, some that we can't probably talk about here on the Matt Report. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, what are some of the kind of just your, your overall thoughts when you think about wrestling and, you know, some of the, the times that you've had over the uh you know, better part of, uh, you know, five, four or five decades. It's some of the greatest things in my life that happened to me. Again, just the importance we said, the, the accident and the wrestling injuries I've had to overcome. If it wouldn't have been for wrestling and doing the things I did, not just that, just there's certain things that we all have in life that wrestling helped me achieve that or get over the hump, so to speak. Um, it's some of the greatest memories I have from teammates to friendships to parents that I can go down the line it came from that sport well I'll tell you I, I uh, every people kind of know that we hung out you know um, for years and stuff like that and I still get uh, asked about you all the time so there's gonna be people, people out here have been wanting to know what's been going on with John McNulty so uh, uh -huh. you are kind of still splitting some time you go out to Arizona for part of the year you come back to Ohio so um, yeah just kind of uh, well at I fell in love with Arizona right. when I went to college there, and the weather's really great for me. Um, I just, I love it. And if I could stay, keep my fam get my family to move there and everything, it'd be a perfect world. But this is where I'm from, and it's my home, and my family and my grandchildren are here. And so this is home base, and I kind of snake away when I can. Well, people are going to be glad to uh, see you. I'm sure they're going to enjoy this uh, show. Seeing you. I miss a lot of them. Yeah. All right. Well, I appreciate you, sh you uh, coming by this week and being on the penultimate uh, episode this season. <laughs> Stuck it in there again. <laughs> um, so, again, uh, you know, thanks to uh, John McNulty for coming on the show this week. Thanks to our sponsors, Cobos Insurance Center and uh, Century 21 Deanna Realty. Thanks to Bruce Bishop and Kristen Bauer, both behind the camera this week. And most of all, thanks to you, the viewer. We will see you next week for the season finale.